there's this infamous board game called Diplomacy. It takes a really long time to teach people how to play it, and it takes forever to play. It requires exactly seven people, which makes it really hard to get it to the table. It's a game about backstabbing and betrayal. It's a game about politics and intrigue and conquest, and you have to betray your friends to win this game. It is a game that makes people bitter. It is a game that makes people angry at each other. What if I told you that there was a game that had all of the same elements, but was worse? This is Hunter. In a game of Hunter, you and your friends will play as the ruling corrupt families of this fictional island nation. At the beginning of the game, you're going to elect a president. Who you elect is entirely arbitrary. After you elect a president, that president will appoint the people who voted for him and the people who did not vote for him to be members of his cabinet. You might be a general, which is fantastic. You might be the minister of security, which allows you a free assassination every round. We'll get to that. But if the president really hates you, he'll make you the secretary of the Navy, which is useless. The game is split into two phases. Each phase is about 10 pages of a rule book that is far too long. The main phase is the political phase in which this entire gorgeous, terrible quality board will be completely ignored. You know the BBC basically can use any music ever in anything because they've cleared everything for all of their productions? So like, Indeed. all right, so I'm gonna break down for you as quickly as I can the political phase. The president is going to appoint the different members of his cabinet. He has to give every single player at least one cabinet position. In a game of seven players, which is ideal, every single person's gonna get one cabinet position. Uh, if there are fewer than seven players, some players will end up with more than one cabinet position, but no player can have more than two cabinet positions. The president cannot give himself any positions, and no one can control more than one general. Then the president's going to uh, propose a budget. He's going to draw a number of foreign aid cards, which will be in denominations of one million, two million, or three million pesos. He will then secretly distribute that money between the different players at the table. He can choose to give someone no money. He must declare what he is giving everyone. He may give someone more than the amount of money he declared, but he can never give them less. Then the different players are going to vote on the budget. Players, of course, as the head of their family, have one vote each. For each cabinet position you hold, you have one vote. The players also have a number of different influence and vote cards that they can play at this time. Influence cards hold over from round to round. You keep that card in front of you, and it adds to your total votes over and over and over again. Uh, vote cards are one-time use for an individual election or voting on a single budget. If the players approve the budget, everybody will get the amount of money that the president had allocated to them. They're going to keep that money as their pocket money. If the budget is voted down, the government becomes unstable. Ah! If the government is unstable, then during part nine of the political game, someone's going to be able to start a coup without fulfilling any of the other five conditions that allow you to start a coup. This game is garbage, and I love it. After voting on the budget, if the budget has failed, the Minister of Security can choose to force the budget to be passed at gunpoint. Pew, 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 pew! If he does so, then all of the policemen are moved to the Parliament building on the board, which will affect almost nothing. Honestly, uh, if there is a coup and the military game plays out, the police are virtually useless and it really doesn't matter where they started on the board to begin with. The next phase of the game is assassinations. Each player will secretly choose a location to go to at this time. They can just stay at home. They can go to the nightclub. Party it up a little bit. They can visit their mistress. They can go to their secret headquarters, or they can go to the bank. Going to your mistress, going home, going to the nightclub, are mostly irrelevant in this game. You can visit your headquarters. Uh, if you do so, you have made it possible for you to initiate a coup, even if the government is currently stable. Or you can go to the bank. If you go to the bank, and no one ends up killing you, and the bank isn't closed for lunch, and the bank isn't closed for holiday, which are two separate things in this game. But if you go to the bank, 
and the bank is actually open, and you have pocket money, and no one assassinates you at the bank, then you can deposit your pocket money into your Swiss bank account. The money that goes into your Swiss bank account is your score for this game. At the end of the game, the person who has the most amount of money in their Swiss bank account wins. This is all that matters. After every player has chosen a location to go to for this assassination round, players, starting with the Minister of Internal Security and then going clockwise to the left, can make assassination attempts. The Minister of Internal Security gets one free assassination attempt. All other players must play assassination cards. Some of them cost money to be played. Some of them are free, but come with a negative downside. One of the things that I love the most about this game is these assassination cards. There's your professional assassin and your foreign assassin who just cost money. You guess where somebody is, and if you guess correctly, the assassin kills them. The Minister of Internal Security's assassination works the same way. You guess where somebody is. If you're correct with that assassination attempt, you kill them. When you kill someone, you take all of their money. And there's about two pages of these rules, but more or less the player is just out for the rest of the round and then they come back in. But the fun part is the psychotic assassin. The psychotic assassin, he's free. You don't have to pay him. He's doing this for fun. Uh, but when you go to assassinate somebody, if you guess their location correctly, you roll a dice, and he might kill them. Or he might not kill them, or he might kill you. Because he's psychotic. There's also an amateur assassin who usually fails, but will work for free. And then my favorite part is the burglar. You can only send the burglar to someone's home. If they're home, you actually don't assassinate them at all. But if they're not at home, and you go to their home, you take all of their money. They're not dead, they're not out for the round, but you take all their money. After the assassinations, anyone who went to the bank successfully, without being killed, and the bank wasn't closed for a holiday or for lunch, will be able to deposit as much money as they want in their Swiss bank account. Next phase is the coup phase. Starting to the left of the president, each player gets an opportunity to start a coup. If the government is unstable, any player can initiate a coup. Ah! They initiate a coup by taking any of the military units they control and moving them. Then, to the left, every player gets a chance to move their military units. If you choose to move your military units at this time, you are joining the rebels. Viva la revolucion! The first player to move is the first rebel. That player is leading this rebellion. So what actually happens when you start a coup? Well, you actually use this board and you use these little chips that represent your military units. And despite the fact that they did unique art for every army brigade and the police and the palace guards and the marine, which there is only one of and one military unit by itself is essentially useless. And the one paratrooper who is also essentially useless and all of the different students and writers and teachers and, and communists who can join in and, and, and rise up through the streets if someone has a card and the required card that goes with it, which is the only way that you can find the actually bringing units in the game, making it astronomically impossible that anyone will ever actually play those units. All of the units operate exactly the same way. This is essentially a game of risk, a really bad game of risk, but at least it has a turn limit. After six rounds of combat, whoever controls the majority, whether it's the rebels or the people who are loyal to the president, whoever controls a majority of these red locations, they win the coup. If the president's party wins the coup, then the president stays president. If the rebels' party wins the coup, then the first rebel is still the president. The first rebel becomes the president. And then, if they feel like it, they can execute every single person on the opposing side. Actually, if you're the president and you survive a coup, you can execute every single person you wish including the people who are loyal to you. And if you're the first rebel and you win the coup, you can assassinate the people who joined you in that coup. Everybody who dies, well, you're gonna get their money. And they're out for the rest of the round. But the round is over now, and you're gonna have to appoint a new cabinet, and you're gonna have to make some of them generals. So if you execute everybody, you're not gonna survive the next round of the game. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to reward loyalty, because it's possible that the person who joined you in your coup attempt isn't trustworthy. 
So maybe you let the old president live and you make him your minister of internal security. I'm going to make you the minister of internal security. Mwah! Hunter. This game is a mess. Uh, it may already be clear uh, from things that I've said already in this review that I think that this game is a train wreck. This rulebook is 20 pages long, and on page three, uh, during the constitution of your Republic of Bananas, it tells you uh, first uh, to reference page five, then it says reference page 13, then it says reference pages nine and 10, and it also says reference page seven. Also, the art in this game is problematic. Like, that's, let's leave it at that. It, it's, there are some offensive stereotypes in here, and I cannot defend that. This is a comedy game. This is uh, a bunch of jokes in a box. Some of the jokes are very funny. Uh, one of my favorite things in this entire game is there's a card. It says, students hand out flyers. Uh, it looks like any of the cards that would give you influence in an election, give you votes. And it says uh, that this obviously has no effect. Also, I think it's cute that the Secretary of the Navy does basically nothing and has a cute little fishing pole. But there are, there are so many problems here. One thing that's really frustrating is that the influence cards, which you get to keep in front of you and use to influence the votes over and over and over again, are for huge amounts of votes. Uh, the church is worth 10 votes, the conservatives are worth eight, and the bankers are worth seven. Then you have all these cards that you can use only one time. They're, you use them when you need them most that are worth two, three, sometimes only one vote. And they're not enough to ever sway an election, so those cards are kind of useless to even have if any of the other players at the table have one of these permanent influence cards. The military part of this is a slog and it should be this fun, exciting, short burst of action as a release from the political part of the game, which honestly, the political part of this game has more excitement. On the last two pages of the rule book, it starts throwing out uh, a way to play a shorter game, a way to play a longer game, uh, house rules that you can add in. It suggests house rules. And to me, that demonstrates a game that was not fully playtested, that was not fully thought out. This is the antithesis of excellence. But there's no other game I've ever played that's like this. We were playing a game and there was definitely going to be a coup. The current president had everyone against him and he was set up to lose that coup and be assassinated or executed by the winners of that coup. And he asked me if he could look at the rule book. And he thumbs through the rule book for a second. This is during the banking phase, which is right before the coup phase. And he just looks at me and he goes, I resign. And he points out in the rule book, it says that the president can resign at any time except during a coup. Everyone at the table laughed because Everyone knew there was going to be a coup. He resigned and we voted someone into office who didn't want to be the president. We had the coup anyways. And the former president who just resigned joined the rebels to overthrow the government. This game is funny. This game is, is mean because you're assassinating each other, you're taking each other's stuff. Somebody plays a card and you play a card that says, nah, -uh, that can't happen. But the game is so wacky and, and the swings in this game are so extreme and outrageous that you never feel that committed to your strategy, which sometimes is a bad thing. Sometimes you wanna feel like you thought carefully and you planned carefully. This game has you reacting, only reacting. And you react out of spite and you react out of whimsy. You don't just react to win, but you think, you know what would be really funny right now? If we had a coup. Despite the fact that it takes a long time to teach, you can play this with people who are not serious board gamers and they will have fun because the game at its heart appeals to this 
inner uh, desire for mayhem. This is an experience, and I think that you should have it. I am not recommending that you buy this game. I'm not recommending that you spend your money buying this game. But if they have a copy at your local board game store, steal it. They won't notice that it's missing. They won't care. Nobody's played it in five years. And then get a group of people together who are a little bit crazy and get them all really, really drunk and play this game. You'll probably regret it. That's it. Oh, pff, credits. Or the. And we're done. Whatever. Yeah. And, and, and.